Good morning all. Yesterday I built this and uh, it's a dual triangle wave oscillator. It's for the vocoder project and I've just been messing around with it. So the first part of this project that I built was the noise generator which is now on its own board with a pot and then this uh, twin oscillator is part of the internal excitation network. So what I've built is this section here, there are two oscillators, uh, this one and this one, and they have uh, frequency controls, they have a shape control here, and then a level control. Now I haven't bothered to build the comparator section here, I've just built the triangle wave oscillators. When the output of those go through the comparator, of course they become square waves with variable mark space ratio, but the triangle waff Triangle wave oscillators sound rather nice, so I've just put these two sections together, mixed them together with a couple of resistors, and uh, I've been playing with the, uh, the sounds that they can make. Now, I haven't quite worked out what I'm doing with power supplies yet. The problem with um, op amps and audio circuitry is that you need both a negative and a positive power supply. So I'm using batteries at the moment, 16 of them. Uh, this is about minus 10 volts, this is plus 10 volts, and then the two connect here for the ground rail. The power supply in the original project is a fairly conventional 15015 split transformer, mains transformer, bridge rectifier, smoothing capacitors, uh, 12 volt regulators, and additional transistors to share the current and therefore the heat. Um, there's also a 5 volt supply, another tap on the transformer, another bridge rectifier, another regulator. But I'm just wondering whether this is the best way to go for this rebuild. I've been looking through my old transformer uh, supply. Uh, I don't have a 15015, I've got a 606 and uh, a 909, but no 15015, so I'd have to buy that if I was going to go the transformer route. I did wonder whether I might just use a couple of these. I've got so many, this is a 15 volt, but I've got plenty of 12 volt versions of these sorts of things. Got loads of them kicking around and there shouldn't be any problem connecting uh, the output pos to neg because these things are all uh, internally isolated. So you should be able to connect two of these together. But I'm just wondering for an audio project, is a switch mode a good idea? Not sure yet. But uh, back to these two oscillators, now I've got this connected into my active speaker there and I've put it quite close to the uh, camera's microphone. So let's have a play with the frequencies. Now at the moment both oscillators are at approximately the same frequency. They're not quite the same and you can probably hear a bit of phasing where the phase of the two signals is overlapping and then drifting apart. But the two oscillators are within mm, a fraction of a hertz of each other. Okay, let's start changing the frequency of one of the oscillators. So now they're an octave apart. Go back to unison, that's one to one, same frequency. Now that's a third, uh, major third I think it's called. So one of them will be 1.3 times the frequency of the other. Let's go to a perfect fifth. Try and get them exact. So now the oscillator that I'm adjusting is uh, 1.5 times the frequency of the other one. And now they're 2 to 1 frequency of the second oscillator, twice that of the first. And I'll just shift it slightly off and you can just hear the phasing effect come in. Now let me see if I can get a few more of these note ratios. I'll try a second, although that's quite difficult to tune. 
I honestly don't know where that one is. That's a third. The fifth is very strong, so you can pretty much tell where that one is. Now that's a sixth. Seventh again, it's very dissonant, it's hard to tell that one. And the octave. And uh, if you prefer things a little more visual, I've put it on the scope. Unfortunately, my scope has the most reflective screen in the world, but uh, there are the two waveforms in perfect unison. In fact, they're almost locked together. I think that's due to coupling. In other words, pulses on the supply lines feeding from one through to the other. But they're absolutely locked there. So let's just break them away. You can hear now that phasing effect as they move apart. So let's see what the uh, perfect fifth looks like in terms of waveforms. And it's that. Now I'm not sure whether we can count this, but for every one full cycle of red, we're actually getting one and a half cycles of yellow. Let's wait for that one to cross there on the downward and that's on the upward. So we can see there that they're exactly um, 1.5 times the frequency. Uh, channel 1 is 110 hertz, channel 2 is 166. Uh, could get the calculator out, perhaps I will. So 110 times 1.5 is 165. So definitely 1.5 times uh, the other. And now let's take that up to an octave and see what we get. Now the amplitude has risen on the second oscillator. But hopefully we can see there that one is twice the frequency of the other. And let's go back to unison. Now I'm just going to try uh, XY for a moment. So I've got uh, YT formats, so that's Y and time in the X direction. If I change that to XY, and I'm not quite sure why it's square. I would have uh, expected a circle there, but uh, let's go with it. So that's with both oscillators at the same frequency. Let's now try and go up to the fifth. You can hear that when the tones have this sort of fractional relationship, the image stops moving and you get a much more static display. I'm not quite sure what that's telling me. Let's go up to the octave. And that's with one oscillator twice the frequency of the other. And back to unison. So, quite a lot of fun can be had with just a couple of dual op amps and resistors, capacitors, and pots. Let's go down a fifth. Ah, I think what's happening is the passive membranes on the speaker starting to hit the desk. So imagine how much fun you could have when the entire vocoder is finished. So what does a vocoder sound like? Well, there are various tracks um, with vocoder in them. 
If you go to the Wikipedia article on Vocoder, there's a clip here from Mr. Blue Sky by ELO. I can't play it because of copyright reasons. Uh, Craftworks, Autobahn, Pink Floyd, and uh, Radio Gaga by Queen. But if you want a real sense of what a vocoder can sound like in the right hands, I would have a listen to Imogen Heap and her track uh, Hide and Seek. And I'll put a link to it up here, the little symbol up here with the eye. And uh, if you listen to that, I think you'll understand why I'm so excited about building this vocoder. Cheerio.